Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic. And in this tutorial, I'm going to go through that class program that we made in the last tutorial, and we're going to be learning about properties. So uh, allow me to kind of actually explain how our little application works, because it's kind of confusing. So first, we uh, instantiated our object here, or in other words, created an instance of our object with a class salary. So our object is citizen. You can make as many as you want with salary, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can actually assign different values for each one and we'll learn how to do that with properties later actually. Uh, so we created citizen and this little piece of code so when we click our citizen button on our form here uh, what will happen is an, an input box will come up and you know you type in your salary it's a string so we need to create a new variable that is equal to that string that's converted from a string to a numerical value so we used a double and then, using our citizen object, we passed in, as a parameter, that number uh, into the only public procedure in that class. Everything else is private. Our, our variables, the other procedure, the, the functions, just to, so other areas of the program can't access those different features. You know, uh, we want to be careful. Only from the balance function can they, or the procedure. So now going into our little thing here, uh, we now go into the only public subroutine we have here. So salary is now equal to what we passed in. So the, we'll be using 100,000 just as an easy number to read. And we have these two numbers here. So the first one is the price. We just set it equal to zero for no adequately explored reason. Just set it to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, actually. And then later, uh, we set price equal to this function, the federal income tax passing salary oops, as a parameter which is right right here so now it went in as a parameter and that's going to go into another parameter so salary is just being thrown everywhere really so then we go into the uh, tax federal cost uh, or the income tax passing salary in and then all it does is return that salary number times our constant the tax federal which we can change up here anytime we'd like so now price will be equal to how much we'll be paying for our uh, federal federal income tax and then the display menu just displays it and I actually made a little bit of a mistake right here um, I accidentally just had quotes here I was talking about in the previous video how uh, we want each of those boxes that shows each number to tell us which tax we'll be talking about and you might have seen they were blank it's because when I passed uh, this these second parameters in as strings right here I didn't change this to tax dot two string. I should have made an annotation in my last video. I will be doing that, so you'll probably know anyways. But yeah, so now it'll actually show it. And these don't need to be two strings right here. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, so it displays it, and then our final budget, which starts out starts out equal to whatever our total salary was to begin with, we keep subtracting price, which at the time will be equal to whatever that specific tax is. So when we do the state income tax, it'll then take whatever the new value is after subtracting the federal federal income tax, then subtract the state income tax. Then at the very end, it shows us what we're left with. So let's check this out. So I click citizen. I'll type in 100,000. See, now it says federal income tax up there, even though it didn't quite fit. So 15% is our 15,000. And then right here, uh, the final budget will be equal to that 100,000 minus equals that uh, 15,000. So now it's down to 85,000. And then it will be subtracting another 6,000, bringing us down to 79,000 for, uh, for the end budget. And that's all, really, for that. So let's uh, move on to properties. Now, what are properties? Basically, what they do is they allow you to control the, the value of a variable inside of a class. So it's really, really neat. Uh, for specific objects. So for different objects, that specific variable will have a different value. So let's create a, another variable up here. Let's call it the property tax. I think I spelled that right. And let's not set it equal to anything right now. What our property will do is, depending on the object we'll be talking about, uh, uh, if they're making 100,000 or more, Let's make the their property tax 4%. If they're making less than 100,000, let's make it only 
Yeah, that's not quite fair, doubling it on people, but... Eh. It all depends how much you make. How much you need your money. But, uh... So let's create our public property here. So public prop... Property? Oh, there we go. And... And we want it to be public so we can access it from our Form 1. And what should we call it? This is called Wealth. And since we'll be returning a double, uh, we already know we'll be returning a double because we'll be returning how much the tax property will be worth. And I actually have to manually type in end property. My my copy of Visual Studio doesn't automatically put it there for us, or for me. And then type in get and enter. Then the rest of the template will appear for you. So within the get, basically all that goes there is our return return then a variable so I'm not gonna worry about this yet I'll explain it in a moment for our set what this does is it actually creates a variable for us that will it, that pretty much acts as a parameter uh, and these two data types here must be the same I cannot stress that enough they must be the same otherwise we'll get errors uh, let me actually try that right now there I go see error so just so you see I mean some some tutorial people don't show things when they say things when it would take them two seconds to show them. So anyway, so within our if statement, so this value, it can be called, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just leave it as value, and that will be equal to what our whatever our income is. So this will represent that hundred thousand greater than or less than whatever. So using a series of if statements. Uh, so if value is greater than or equal to a hundred thousand then let's set our tax property equal to four percent right and then we'll want an else so if it's any so if it's any other value which will have to be less than a hundred thousand uh, tax property will have to be equal to 2%. There we go. So it's going to be, uh, so basically depending on what we pass in, uh, depending on how much, or what we'll be passing in right here, if it's greater than or equal to 100,000, then our tax property will be 4%. Uh, if it's less than that, it will be 2%. And then up here in our get, we will want to return tax property. There we go. And that's pretty much all it does. So I click save and that should work. So now going to our form one here, what I would like to do is create another object here. And let's just call it Adam. Let's let's make it me this time. I'll just be a specific citizen. As new salary. And what would I like to do? Create another button actually. So copy, paste. So this will be this will be all me. My keyboard is so loud. It's not my keyboard that's loud. It's my, uh, the thingamajigger that pulls out the tray. Okay, so in here, we'll now be accessing my, uh, me, basically. And should I do the same thing here? I could probably do the very same thing here. I could just copy this, paste it. So all this does right here is it allows you to type in your own salary. And I'll be accessing that. So Adam dot now we have wealth right here a property that we created and empty parentheses, parameters parentheses and set that equal to a number let's just set it equal to salary con so whatever we type in and we want to be able to display it so let's create a public uh, another public procedure here or a public subroutine procedure same thing really so display tax so all it will do is tell us this number. All that we return is the .04 or the .02. And that's that's it. So message box dot show and what am I gonna be throwing in here? Oh yeah, tax property. Dot to string and oh oh come on man, what's going on here? Uh, so property tax amount and do we need anything else just throw in an okay here 
And that's all that. So we'll just uh, display the tax property, how much our uh, property tax is. So then I want to go back here and access that. So Adam dot, where is it? Display tax. So I think everything should work there. So if I click save and uh, run this. If I click Adam, if I put in 100,000 or more, so let's put in 150,000. Um, property tax amount is the 4%. However, if I do this again, and I make it, I don't know, 75,000, now it's only 2% instead. Now, what do you think will happen if I go down here, and then I type out citizen instead, and then I type out, um, let's see here, display tax? Yeah. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting and why we have properties, because, uh, that tax, we don't want it to be uh, universal. This is a tax, this will be a specific tax, and this is real life too, really. This is a specific tax that will um, change, the rate will change depending on how much you make. Uh, for property tax in real life, it actually depends on how much your property is actually worth. If you live in one of those multi-million dollar mansions, um, there, it will be closer to 4%, while if you're uh, in more of a middle class, it'll probably be more like one and a half, two percent kind of a thing. Uh, so this 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 is not a constant rate and this is why I'm showing it to you with the property tax because it does change, it does vary uh, depending on the person. So and now of course I'm not actually asking where's the code? Not right here, uh, right here. So I'm not asking the person um, enter the value of your home, I'm, I'm asking for their salary so this has nothing to do with determining uh, your property tax, but but uh, I could just put in enter your enter your yeah I can just do that homes value now of course a hundred thousand would be insane at that point let's actually change that I could change that really quickly to make it more realistic so it was above a million so I'll throw in another that's more realistic but anyways let's do this again so if I run this now the difference what I, I want to show you is we're not going to be setting citizen.wealth equal to anything. So what do you think the display tax will, will be uh, when it pops up? Do you think it will be the same as Adam.display tax? Dot dot or underscore tax? Let's find out. So I click Adam and let's make it 5 million. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now I get the 4%. Now what do you think the citizens will be? Do you think it will be 4% as well? No, it's 0. Now why is that? Well, that's because this property, it set our variable, whoops, our tax property equal to 4% only for Adam and not for any of the other objects that we created. And that's what can really make uh, properties really useful is that they're basically this piece of code that will determine the value of a variable for you for a specific object. So we didn't set citizen.wealth equal to anything so it didn't even have anything to um, didn't have anything to evaluate with nothing to evaluate with so since our tax property as a double is a null it just gave us zero and that's about it for this tutorial I, I hope this was useful for you I hope you understand classes a lot better um, practice them on your, uh, on your own because they are a very important concept in any programming language to understand uh, and well I hope I, I see you next time